And if we could uh, put number 8, 10, 11, 12, and 13 on consent. Um, if that's okay with Mr. And 5 and 6. Uh, Mr. Chair, we have a uh, speaker card for those items. Oh, yeah, speaker cards for those items? Yeah. Okay. Uh, Dr. Clyde Williams and Dr. Clyde Williams. Okay, we'll hold those items. Now, we're not taking them up right now. We're, we're, but we're, we were going to put them on consent, but we'll hold them because you uh, submitted a speaker card. So. Items 8, 10, 11, 12, and 13, consent. If that's okay with Mr. Alarcon? He says nods yes. Okay. Let's go to item number one. Item number one is a discussion item on the uh, proposed CAO budget cuts to the Department of Public Works. Staff here to present this, and if we could uh, keep this one brief. Um, we just want to just do a quick, um, quick overview of some of the expected redirections of funding and are there any other possible cuts in the future on the horizon that you think we should be aware of so we could start planning in this committee? I'm David Hirano from the Office of the CAO. I'm sorry, Councilman. Um, I was not expecting to have to talk about proposed cuts or okay. cuts in the future. Um, I was prepared to address the, the few minor cuts that were made by the Council That's yesterday fine. and David. Um, in the weeks before, but okay, uh, and I actually cool. don't think I'd be authorized to talk about anything that's not yeah. public yet. So. That's fine. No, we're not going to it. It's just a report. This is just a report on some of the actions we've taken on the cuts we made to the Public Works Department. Okay. Yeah. okay. Um, yesterday, the, the council approved a, a series of cuts that helped offset the um, the the remaining deficit in the city budget. Um, in, the, in those cuts, there were several that impacted the Department of Public Works. Nothing uh, of major significance, though. Um, if you like, I can go through and just kind of highlight those for you. Sure. Okay. Um, there were cuts to the Bureau of Sanitation, um, stormwater pollution abatement fund um, savings that sanitation was not going to be able to use was removed um, from their budget to $200,000. $300,000 in gas tax savings was removed from the Bureau of Engineering budget, um, funding that they were not going to be able to use for the year. Uh, we identified some completed capital projects that had money um, sitting on them that we had yet to move, and so we um, swept those, and the council approved that. The total for that was about $2 million. Um, let's see. The Public Works Board um, reduced their budget by um, eliminating some overtime and some praying and binding and one vacant position. Um, Public Works um, Contract Administration Bureau reduced their budget by eliminating some overtime and by um, achieving some extra reimbursements for projects that they've been working on. The Bureau of Engineering reduced their budget by reducing some overtime and some expense accounts and got a significant amount of reimbursement for projects they've been working on to the general fund. Um, street services reduced their budget by um, reducing their equipment leasing and contract trucking account. Um, that was gas tax funded and gas tax funding will, will help us with our general fund. Um, overall, um, the, the bureaus and departments have reported that the reductions, though they are reductions and, and um, will impact services are not major reductions at this point. So. Great. Thank you very much. Okay. So we will wait to see what else happens in budget and finance. But thank you for your report. Okay. We have two public speakers. Um, Dan Mariscal or Dan Marisal. Welcome. Thank you. Uh, I've been looking over some of the cuts that uh, are being made to the Department of Public Works, and uh, I really think that uh, we're being shortchanged 
because a lot of us employees work above our classifications many 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 of us are doing jobs that are above our classifications and we're saving the city and have been saving the city untold amounts and they're not being considered and one of the things that, that this I'm hoping that this uh, committee will take into consideration is that the, a lot of the money that's being overlooked I find it hard to believe that we're sitting on about four hundred million dollars in stimulus funds none of it's being reflected in, in any of the uh, the CAO's proposals or budgets or information in there and I find it difficult to believe that the, the people in the City Council ran uh, under the premise of being innovative uh, go-getting people uh, uh, imaginative and at a time where we really need that it's not there so these cuts that are going to the Department of Public Works, I hope you realize that the Department of Public Works is in itself an essential part of the core city services. And every time you make these cuts, it results in services that aren't being done, diminished services. We're the people on the ground who hear it from the public, not by email, not by letters, not by what they publish in the, in the newspapers and magazines. We're listening to them on the ground. They're very unhappy, and we're hearing about it. So our, our message to this committee is please take everything into account. Be the imaginative people that you advertise yourselves to be. Take full advantage of the money that you've been sitting on since March of 2010. These cuts hurt everybody. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Clyde Williams. Dr. Clyde Williams, 415 Barrett Road, El Sereno, Northeast LA. Cuts and public works. Why? Public works is unusual because public works has access to the special assessment districts. It can be for lot cleaning, it can be for speed humps, it can be for all sorts of things. It was two years ago, uh, the Bureau of Sanitation tried to get an urban stormwater fee instituted and it failed because of the city council blocking it. That was to clean the stormwater inlets which are now during this last winter not being cleaned and causing ponding of water and potholes. We have a problem. We have a lot of people that know the city very well. We tried to fill the potholes. Okay, that gives a little bit of work but in the background, there's a whole bunch of special assessment districts that could be involved, and that means full cost recovery. Lot cleaning. Public Works does a lot better job of it than the fire department. They at least know where people are, what lots are occupied, what lots aren't, and how to clean them. Whereas the fire department had their mess last year, and they're going to have another mess this year. So uh, I'd highly recommend that you look for various imaginative special assessment districts for public works where people actually see something being done rather than waiting for a half hour, 45 minutes, and having nothing done. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I'd just like to uh, respond to say that uh, uh, there are there are several of us on city council that are absolutely frustrated at the lack of, of creativity uh, emanating out of the CAO's office. The fact of the matter is that they're taking a slash and burn approach and not being surgical about their cuts and anticipating how those cuts are going to affect other things. In this specific regard, I'm particularly concerned that we're sitting on uh, a lot of gas tax money that could be used to deploy services like potholes and street paving and a lot of other things, uh, but uh, but because we have a, a hiring freeze, um, we are not using that money, even though it's not impacting the general fund. Um, so, uh, Doctor, you're 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 correct. There there are this this the Public Works Department has uh, has a bounty of of special funds that are not being utilized, uh, as I said, in a surgical way to determine how can we preserve. Uh, jobs and more importantly uh, services so that the public won't be complaining 
I fear that that, uh, that short-term view is going to uh, result in, in uh, a, a world of lawsuits from everything from tree limbs falling on cars and heads to uh, uh, trips on the sidewalk uh, and, uh, and uh, uh, car accidents that will occur when the streets uh, go awry. So it's penny wise, pound foolish, but the fact of the matter is those few of us on the council who have been saying that consistently for the last three years um, are, are not being heard by the majority. Thank you. And um, I just noticed uh, that we put s a few of these items on consent and uh, back, but we have um, public speaking cards on 8, 9, and 10. Are you still here for 8, 9, 10? Uh, Guadalupe, you're still here. Richard Mills. Yeah, and Guadalupe again. So we'll, we'll, we'll take those items up instead. Um, so next item, we, we will, uh, what's the action on number one? It's just a reporting, no action required. Okay, next item. Item number two is a motion by Council Members Rizar, Alarcon, and Garcetti relative to exempting from furloughs certain classifications that are fully paid for by speci special funds within the Bureau of Street Services. This item is also referred to the Budget and Finance and Personnel Committee. Thank you. Staff here to report on this item. And I think what we want to hear really is two things. Is uh, Number one, what the motion states, which is we have uh, certain classifications that are not general fund. They are specially funded. Why not exempt them from the furloughs to get our streets repaved and go out and do the work then that our constituents need would wa want us to see done. But secondly, if you could address the issue that was raised as well by Mr. Lacon, which is we have all this ARA money, uh, a lot of projects are not moving forward. Um, we've directed the CAO uh, through budget and finance to look at whether we can sweep some of that money for projects that are not moving forward, put them into uh, possibly street services or other departments to get people off of furloughs uh, or put and put people back to work to fill potholes and do the trim trees or whatever it is we need to do to um, um, and the gas tax money as well. So those are the two items we hope to hear from you and we intend to send this item to council and, and see there. But I know in budget and finance there's been some concern about um, exempting certain classifications. Of, you could also let us know what those are. Thank you. Okay, David Hirano from the Office of CAO. Um, let, me, let me see if we can start with the Bureau Street Services budget. There's about $19 million in, in general fund. The, the general fund basically is spread out through the investigation enforcement function, the lot cleaning function, urban forestry function, and a, a part of the street sweeping function. Uh, the resurfacing function that uh, is of priority to just about everybody that I um, talk to is completely special funded. It's comprised of funds from the gas tax, Prop C, Prop 1B, ARA, and street damage. And do we have I think we have a little bit of traffic safety in there. Um, there are no general funds in the street services budget for that function. However, the entire Bureau of Street Services um, staff is on furlough. In, for the obvious reasons, um, in the general funded um, portions of the department, but I think the one that is probably uh, most perplexing to, to you all is the resurfacing function. Now, the resurfacing function um, has full cost recovery for some of the funding sources, but not all. In Prop C, we get full. Um, cost recovery in street damage we get full cost recovery and in prop 1b we get full cost recovery in ARA we are able allowed to bill for full cost recovery but we don't really have an a clear sense of whether we are going to get paid for that um, we we can hope and we do hope and we continue to bill for that on gas tax we do not get full cost recovery um, the cost recovery is significantly um, well, it's, it's significantly under cost recovered. We had approximately $38 million in um, related costs that, that are attributable to the gas tax fund. And this year, and we were able to budget and recover about $15.6 million. Um, the current policy on 
cost recovery and furloughs is that um, a function would need to be 90 percent um, recovered from special funds in order to be exempted from furloughs. When we initially sat down to discuss the possibility of relieving um, that division from furloughs with the Bureau of Street Services, what we discovered was that their current method of deployment does not really allow us to identify any one position or any one crew as 90 percent um, um, cost recovered, despite what I just told you. And the reason being is that the way they deploy their forces is on a geographic basis and not on a source of funds basis. So they don't have one crew they can task out as a Prop C crew, which would be working only on roads where buses travel. Um, and, you know, the deployment of that would be somewhat inefficient as they'd be running all over the city trying to do um, Prop C roads when they could um, be better deployed maybe in the morning working on a Prop C road, in the afternoon on a gas tax road, or one day working on a, a Prop C road, and the next day working on a street damage funded road. And so um, given that and the desire of the department to try and be as equal and fair to all its employees, the decision was made not to or recommended to council not to um, put, exempt any of the employees from furlough. So that's where we stand today. But is it, pri I mean, I, you gave me a little sense of um, the difficulty in, in exempting, um, but it's doable. You just have to figure it out a little bit more. And well, and I, because of the main reason that we have uh, not exempted them is, is deployment based, I'd like to, to add, you can give you Ron Olive from the Bureau of Street Services. He can ask, answer whether he thinks it's okay. doable or not. Good afternoon, Council Members. Uh, Ron Olive, Assistant Director of the Bureau of Street Services. Uh, first of all, we'd like to thank you for introducing or presenting and seconding the motion that really gives us an opportunity to revisit this issue about us being 100 percent furloughed. Um, where we are today is out of our 900 employees, we have 50 EAA employees who are capped at 10 furlough days. Everybody else has been um, has to serve 26 furlough days for this year, and they've all served 16 to date. So we're scheduled to serve 10 more working days, or excuse me, furlough days the rest of the year. Before you go further, can you, can you explain? Uh, Mr. Rano said the department decided uh, to spread the furloughs uh, equally. But how did that? Where did that policy come from? Well, I, I can't speak to the policy for the entire department. Just for street services, um, it, it's. Even though only 14 percent of our budget is general funded, we have a no all of our classifications um, pretty much across the board. Nobody's working on any one funding source or even on any one function. Um, we've heard about resurfacing. I, I understand that, but uh, I was asking. He, he said that there was a policy decision, uh, the, or part part of the policy decision was based on a desire to be, treat all employees the same. And I, I'm, where is that policy? I don't understand where that came from. Well, that yes, that was represented to us during our initial discussions um, over over furloughs, um, and that was an addi additional consideration. But the primary consideration was, was the, the deployment. Provide additional services. We're, we're more concerned about employees being equal. Well, there, there's. I don't know if we, we are at the place where we are equal across the city, but we are definitely trying to trying to at least have a, a rational basis for the way we approach things and well, who I'm goes on furlough, who's not. Basis. Yes. I'm saying that if we have money to pay for services, we ought to get those people out there, whether or not they're it, whether or not they're getting the same number of furlough hours. In our initial discussions with, do the work. with the bureau, they indicated that there was a significant. Um, teamwork culture within the bureau, and that they wanted to try and main, um, reinforce that and maintain that into whatever the outcome was. They wanted so to make sure. So we're going to let the team vote on it. I'm sorry, they let the oh, team vote. Let the team vote on uh -huh. it because I don't think they. I don't think that's true. I think if 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 I'm working with Mr. Wezar and he can get hours that I can't get, why would I not want him to get those hours? I want my team member to benefit. And I believe that's the spirit of the, of the department. If, if we can provide services without impacting the general fund, we ought to do it. Uh, the, we haven't got to the second side of the issue, but 
I'm just saying this policy about equal treatment, that's bogus. So if you were to direct staff to say exemptions for people in street services that are specially funded, you could go do it, correct? Well, we could, Councilman, but again, it's difficult because to isolate folks that are special funded only is very difficult. Again, 14 percent is spread pretty much across the Bureau. So you have a lot of the functions that 90 percent are special funded, but 10 percent of the time they work on a general fund, very difficult. What we're proposing instead, and again, we feel that over the last couple of years with all the budget cuts, we really have to focus on our core services, and we're not performing any services that aren't core or critical at this point. So with over the $4 million, over $4 million that we've saved over the furloughs today and efficiencies and really frugal use of overtime through the year, we can at this point, and we propose this to you who's still thinking about it, we have $2.5 million that we could transfer back that represents the 10 additional furlough days for the rest of the year for all the employees, and then you'll get 10 additional working days out of our employees, 9,000 working days, which equates to filling 10,000 more potholes, 10 more miles of resurfacing, all the additional street cleaning, picking up those branches on the streets quicker from down tree limbs, et cetera, et cetera. Code enforcement, which is something we've really been struggling to keep up with, and that's really what we're proposing. You're going to get the win-win. You'll get the money, and you'll get the additional services. Okay, so let's start. What would you do? What do you propose? Let's start from the beginning. The 10 additional working or furlough days that all our employees are scheduled to serve the rest of the year represents about $2.5 million. So within our gas tax fund, our contractual service account, we have identified and we believe we can commit today to, with those savings, $2.5 million, we can buy out those furlough days, if you will, for all the employees. And, again, rather than trying to separate the 86 percent special fund and the 14 percent non, extremely difficult, not really fair. The weed abatement in the high fire zones, the code enforcement, which are 100 percent general fund, difficult to exclude them, if you will. The admin support for the special funded services, very difficult to exclude them. So rather we're proposing, and, again, we're not the experts on all the financial details, but it seems logical that if we could, again, provide the $2.5 million and the services, it seems like a win-win for all of us. Would the CAO be okay with that? The obvious purpose of the furlough program is because we have an emergency in the general fund. And as admirable as street services efforts are, they do not solve the emergency in the general fund. Until such time as the emergency in the general fund is resolved, we would not be supportive of or would not recommend deviation from the current policy. Well, wait a minute. The budget that was supported by the council and the mayor called for 230 miles of street resurfacing. Yeah, 235, sir. Are we on goal? Unfortunately, again, with the furloughs and the higher freeze, we're probably looking at 180 miles now. Okay, so then if the CAO wants to stay on task, why aren't you coming up with a method to get us closer to what we promised the people? You're just looking at bean counting. You're not looking at services. And the budget has two functions. The budget has a monetary instruction, but it also has a service instruction. And the CAO is responsible for both. And the department is proposing a method to get us to be more consistent with what we put in the budget. It is a policy consideration. But you're not adhering to the policies that we directed. On the service side, sir, the main reason that we're being given as to why the difference between 235 and 180 is that they haven't been able to hire as quickly as they've been attriting now. They don't have the staff, the full complement of staff that they would need. It's less, as I understood it, an issue of furloughs. It's more of an issue of overall staffing. And there are different reasons for that, but we have been trying to help them find a way to get more staff into including. So if it's not an issue of furloughs, why not let them fill those furloughs? It's more of an issue of where we are citywide with the general fund. And that it's actually not. What do we lose by doing that in the general fund? Dollars and cents. 
We're still um, $50 million out on the general fund for this year. No, but the I mean, two with regard to this specific proposal, how much money do we lose on the general fund? Well, if we, I mean, we lose it. If the two, the two and a half million that they're offering could go to provide some relief against that $50 million shortfall, or it can be used as they're suggesting, and it's a wash for street services from their budget perspective. From an overall city perspective, it's a question of whether you want to use that two and a half million to offset the overall general fund shortfall. You know, <laughs> they do that to us all the time in our office, and I understand it's frustrating. Well, I, we, I, I get, I, I get it. I, I think what the, you know, the CAO's position is: well, those two and a half million dollars could go to relieve the larger general fund problem we have. But then again, you could ask that about a number of different departments that are using specially funded funds in different ways. Um, you know, and here, I think it's a decision that we would like that the council should make: is look. Um, do we want to prioritize filling our potholes and repaving our streets? And, you know, I, I would guess that, uh, well, I don't know, we'd have to put that question before them. But I know that's what we hear a lot of. So. Well, that's one thing we would agree with you on, and putting the question before them. I'm not them, clear so. on where that two and a half million, which two and a half million are you talking about? Um, the Bureau of Street Services has identified savings within their budget. Um, in the gas tax. Within the gas tax budget. Which can't be swept into the general. It can be moved because we're under collecting for related it costs. Can, it can. It can. Be. It can, it can be. be moved. Yes. Okay. Because we're under collecting for related costs, uh, we can move that to the general fund as reimbursement for related costs that are unrecovered. So. Now I see where you're going. Yeah. yeah. Um, what other departments? Um, we could uh, move this item and Mr. Lycorn ask that we uh, move it with the proposal as proposed by the department and the council. Just, just yeah. Yeah, okay. okay, so we'll move this item to full council and uh, we've got some public speakers, but we'll request that as part of the motion that we've asked that $2.5 million dollars and you guys could get the language from the department to effectuate this and what it means and we'll you know, we'll move it to full council. Um, um, well, thank you. Mr. Chair, we have uh, five speaker cards for this item. Got it. Thank you. Thank John you very much. Purcell. Hello, <clears throat> my name is John Purcell. I'm an employee of a Special Projects, and I'm here in support of Item 2. And uh, my reasoning for that is uh, the reaction of the citizens who I've met on the street. I have had run across uh, some citizens who ecstatically exclaim the virtues of their councilman because of a project which we are providing them. They're really happy. Then I have run across other citizens who are vor very vociferously, I mean, they are really angry because they cannot get a particular service. And they ask me, how can we get this done? So what I'm saying is, if you reduce services, you're going to increase dramatically the number of disgruntled, angry, rebellious citizens. Very good point. So we feel it out there. I feel it out there. Thank you. 
Charles Leon. Thank you. Honorable members of the Public Works Committee, thank you so much for your time this afternoon, and, and thank you so much for assisting with this dialogue to preserve services in these constituents. What you've heard today from the CAO's office uh, and what you've heard up until this point um, have been excuses as to why they cannot exempt workers in street services. You've heard these excuses. You've heard them trying to give you a justification as to why they keep them uh, in street services on furloughs. They say, well, until the citywide problems with the general fund deficit are eliminated, they won't be able to do anything. Folks, the Department of Public Works, the furloughs are not egalitarian. The furloughs are not equal. You can imagine what type of environment it's creating for the workforce when you have street service employees who work feet away from employees in sanitation who are not on furlough. The reason we're here today, the reason this discussion is happening, the reason these employees are on furlough is not because of a general fund problem and the impacts. We're here because of politics. We're here because the city of Los Angeles is doing everything it possibly can to create the type of leverage that it needs to keep the coalition talking with the city about the problems that exist before us. And the coalition is not oblivious. We understand that there are citywide problems today. We understand there's a general fund problem today. We're not here today to talk about the citywide challenges, though they are important. We're here today to talk about street services. Exemption aside from that, we are from, from, from your motion uh, that you introduced. They shared an idea that the money that they're going to be saving with the remaining furloughs that they're enforcing on our membership in street services is two and a half million dollars. They have the money. They have the two and a half million dollars. Street services is saying, look, we want to return full, uh, services to full strength. Let us do that. And they're not being given that opportunity. Folks, we're here today because of politics. They want the leverage. And the folks that are making these decisions don't live in your council district. They're not having to answer your constituents who depend on these services. We need leadership. Let's not boggle this down in committees. Let's get the business going again. Let's return for services to full strength. And don't take their games or their politics. Thank you very much, sir. Art Swipman. Art Swipman. El Sereno. Art Swipman. Hmm? <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. That's all right. <laughs> Good afternoon. My name is Art Swebman. I am a tree surgeon with the Urban Forestry Division, and I'm here to fully support this motion. Now, as written, I was my classification was probably not affected um, because I don't believe that I'm specially funded, but my brothers and sisters back here do work that's just important as I do. Potholes, resurfacing, and of course tree trimming. This is all public safety. And I'm very glad to hear that Street Services came up with a creative way to uh, actually get all of the employees off of the remaining 10 furlough days. I think that's very important for us because the citizens vote for the politicians not to uh, reduce their services, but to at least maintain them as they were and even expand on them. And I think we can do that here. And I think this is a positive move. And I hope, I hope this moves forward in council. And I hope it does well. I think it will because I think the community wants to see their services continue. So I fully support it. And uh, we've got your back. Hopefully, you got ours. All righty. Thank you very much, Mr. Sweatman. Dr. Clyde Williams. I'll use these one minute. Uh, Dr. Clyde Williams, El Sereno. Uh, in full support of special services. However, maybe we should look at it. Why furlough the lower pe lower rung of people, the people that actually go out and do the work rather than organizing and managing the work? Should consider that furloughs would be exempt for a certain class because a lot of people, if you lose 10% of your income now, you lose your house. But there's a lot of people that might say have had a large reserve in the past and can afford to take a 10% without losing their house. Maybe there should be special conditions as to the level of salary. Thank you. Thank you very much. Dan Marty Skull.
Good afternoon, again. On item number two, uh, I really don't think it goes uh, far enough in just trying to e exempt certain classifications in as far as these uh, furloughs are concerned. And I'll tell you why. <clears throat> One of the things that Mr. Uh, Olive uh, mentioned, he used the term uh, core critical. Uh, our services that we provide are all core critical services. These are the services that people expect. You want a political victory? Here's your chance. Nothing would be better than to, to go back to your council districts and crow that you've saved their services. This is what they want. This is what they expect. And I remember in the uh, 2009 agreement, there was a statement that was issued jointly by the mayor and the city council and that they gave a commitment to the shared sacrifice equally among all city entities. That was a commitment that you gentlemen made and the mayor. By doing this selectively, you're breaking your commitment, you're breaking your word, you're breaking your promise, not only to us, but to the people of the city of Los Angeles. You have to remember something. You mentioned in here about the storm, and disasters. Well, ask yourselves, what happens if the big one hits and we find ourselves in disarray, understaffed, and ill-prepared? How well would you have served the city of Los Angeles at that point? The Department of Public Works, like all city places, have a unique way of interchanging their, their responsibilities. People who drive a truck for uh, urban forestry can assist in, in potholes. There's this interchangeability that's unique to the Department of uh, Public Works. Take that into account when you go back to City Council, and I, and I would respectfully request that you amend the motion to include all of the street services. Thank you. Thank you very much. We'll move this item forward uh, with a proposal by the Department to include the 2.5, 2.5, more or less, whatever number that comes up to um, from gas tax to. Uh, Take members of street services off of furloughs, and uh, our CLA would come up with a language to uh, get that amendment to okay. council. Thank you. Uh, would that need to go to budget and finance, or we could just send it to yeah. council? Okay, um, Mr. Chairman, I, I believe you're you're sending this matter as a communication back to the council, and including in the in the discussion, uh, we're looking at the 2.5 million dollars which you need to. It's being discussed from Mr. Olive and others, and that be a part of the report back uh, that will be uh, prepared by, um, I guess, the CAO on this matter. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. So ordered. Next item. Item number three is a motion by Council Members Labonche and Parks relative to amending Council File Number 090600-S159 to establish a working group consisting of the DWP, Department of Transportation, CEO, CLA, and other relevant city entities to identify efficiency of opportunities within the DWP and DOT to include consolidation and reorganization. This item is also referred to the personal committee. All right. Uh, item number three, we have uh, one, two, three, two public speakers. We uh, need to conclude this meeting at 345, so... Um, Unless there are any pending questions, we probably don't need a report on this. We could just uh, ask the CAO to report back on this. Um, there's no report, right? Yeah, uh, the, the motion uh, is, is looking for a working group. I think it would be more efficient if you just direct the CAO with the appropriate departments to prepare a report and come back to you. Let's do that. That will be the motion. Um, uh just for clarification, uh, Mr. Chair, you're uh, approving the motion, right? Yes. To the council. Okay. But as a, as not as a working group, but as a just direct the CAO to do it and direct work with the. Report back. We'll figure it out when it comes back. Dr. Clyde Williams. Dr. Clyde Williams, El Sereno. Uh, a merger. In a merger, you usually have to assess the assets and the liabilities. What are the assets and liabilities of the Department of Transportation? I don't know. 
do they have a street do they actually know what assets and liabilities they control because over the s r seven ten it was a flip as to well originally public works was in charge of it but then no d o t was in charge of it no that's because bureau of engineering was supposed to be in charge of it a lot of wiggle worm room what we need is that a full audit of the department of transportation and what is it doing now what are the liabilities of it and what are its assets parking is an asset uh... the commuters are liability for the city of los angeles because they use our streets and we have to pay for them so we're quite concerned regarding what DOT actually has as assets and liabilities. One of the elements there is that do we even know what they're doing? Do they have a strategic plan for the transportation facilities of the city of Los Angeles? How does that work in with the MTA's plan? Or does it? Because we've been trying to find out what's happening to San Fernando Road what's happening to the bridges all sorts of things but transparency no there's no central location as as to a strategic plan as to what's going on when it's going to go on and how much is it going to cost not only to construct but to operate and maintain oh uh, once a long time ago I asked that we reduce the lanes on Huntington Drive DOT said oh no we can't do that because the commuters would be affected. Thank you. Thank you. So without objection, we'll um, get a report back from CAO on this item. Next item is number four. Um, I'm not sure if we could just approve this item. It's just directing the uh, Bureau, Bureau of Street Services and DOT to report on how the city can create a fully funded speedum program that would allow street services to accept funds from city entities as well as outside groups to pay existing staff to perform this work and CAO to develop an official price estimate to install speed humps to share with city departments, et cetera. Um, do we need to continue this or can we just ask that this be approved and get, get a report back on those items? You could do, you could, Mr. Chairman, Paul, you could do two things. You could, you could keep it in committee, ask the, the appropriate department to report and bring it back to you as expeditiously as possible, or you could just send it to, as a communication back to council and, and, and make it a consideration before uh, some future date of the council. But you could either keep it here or put it to council. All right, well, let's just forward it to council, and then that would direct the departments to do that, right? Let's just, we'll move it on to council. Um, we have two public speaker cards. Dr. Clyde Williams. Okay. Uh, Dr. Clyde Williams, El Sereno. Uh, fully funded speed humps. Why haven't they been constructed? No. This seems like a no brainer. Uh, it's better than potholes. At least it's a positive investment rather than being a maintenance item. But what happened? People wanted their speed humps, but they can't find a way to get them done. So that you're going to go to outside. That's something like lot clearance and brush clearance being done by outside of the Los Angeles area contractors with non-Los Angelino workers. It seems that speed humps could be applied in the same fashion that potholes are when there are already funds available if we know how much they're going to cost. And when can we get them done? Because I believe, at least in LA 32 Neighborhood Council, I could give you maybe 50 by the by the end of the month. That's, exactly, that's exactly what the motion. Hmm? That's exactly what the motion does. Yeah. It doesn't. It's not contracting out. The what? It's not contracting out. The work would be done by city force. Yeah, but why hasn't it been done? Lot clearance and brush clearance, yeah, those are contracted out. They could be done by city employees. It's not being done. Potholes being done by city employees. Speed humps. Why has there been such a backlog? 
Don't know. It would keep a lot of people working, I think. Something like, we'll give you another 150 potholes by the end of the week. You know. Thank you. Well, there's a huge backlog because the program doesn't exist anymore, unfortunately. <laughs> um, we're just going to keep this item here and, uh, and um, get the report back from the department. So let's do that instead of sending it to council. Okay. Hello. Thank you very much. Hello. Next item. Hmm? Item number five is a CEO report relative to transferring the land records function from the city clerk to the Bureau of Engineering. This item is also referred to uh, the Information Technology and Government Affairs Committee. All right. Does the BOE and the city clerk agree that this is a good idea? It's already been done. It's been done. Yep. All right. No need to get a long presentation. Oh, Mr. Alicorn said that wasn't the question. The question was, is, are you guys okay with it? <laughs> <laughs> All right. I think, uh, Mr. Chairman, we could, you could um, uh, note and file number uh, number five and then approve the uh, the draft of ordinance that's being transmitted from the city attorney on number six. That shall be the order. We have two public speakers on both one on five and one on six. Guess who? <laughs> Dr. Clyde Williams. <laughs> You're up. <laughs> Hi. I, one question with, sorry, Dr. Clyde Williams, El Sereno. Lot, land records. My next door neighbor is building a house. He circulated his notices to the adjacent owners, including me, through building and safety. And they delivered it to an address that was 20 years old. So my next door neighbor took the return notice and handed it to me across the fence. How many re land record files are there within the city of Los Angeles? Because apparently building and safety and the fire department have different ones from those of lot cleaning different from those of building and, and sorry the Bureau of Engineering and this one is from the planning department is there more than one record of land ownership within the city of Los Angeles it seems to be at least three maybe four I think you could perhaps save some money by giving it over to the Bureau of Engineering and keeping it up to date because one of the things that they found in the fire department was that their records are not up to date whereas at least the lot cleaning people seem to be much more up to date than the fire department so I would highly recommend that there be only one land record file within the city of Los Angeles and it be kept up to date either through the fire department or through lot cleaning. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. So we'll um, move those items forward. Uh, we're noting file number five and we're sending number six to council as an ordinance. Next item. Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, just for clarification, um, for item number four, uh, do you want that approved or continued? Um, item number four. Continued. Continued. Okay. And um, the next item is item number seven. It's an item that's been continued uh, from August 4, 2010. It's a city engineer report relative to the uh, vacation of Venice Boulevard between Menton Avenue and the alley northeasterly thereof. And Council District 11 has requested that we continue that another 60 days. We'll continue that for 60 days. Okay. Next item. Next item is uh, item number eight. It's a city engineer report relative to the uh, vacation of Miramar Street and Third Street. All right. Guadalupe um, Duran Medina from Council District 1. Hello. Hi. Good afternoon. Guadalupe with Council District 1. Our comments are brief. Um, we're in touch with engineering um, as well as for 8, 9, and 10. And all we ask is to move it forward, but with the condition that the engineers um, and the school district um, just make sure that the current uh, BOE report reflects 
all the conditions, including any that might have been added through council on the first application, that they're in the report, so that they're mirrored. That's all. Now, number nine, uh, I have a note here that says that for your it's request, we would like to continue that 30 days. That's fine. We, we're, we're fine with that okay. continuance. So, um, we're also scheduled to speak on 10, but we'll, okay. On, uh, okay, thank you. On number nine, um, Richard Mias? Mills. Mills. <laughs> yes, sir. We're going to continue this one for 30 days, sir. Okay. You can speak now, or and and uh, or and you can also speak. Well, go ahead and take a public comment again. But you, you can. Uh, well, <laughs> my main point is on this that uh, I just found out about it. Uh, the alley has been improved recently and realigned out to Lucas. Uh, I was mainly concerned that uh, that realignment is not affected here. According to the school district, it's under the new school where they crossed the old alley. And as long as they can uh, furnish uh, support for that, I have no problem with it. However, the plat map they're using is over 100 years old and way out of date. Okay. Thank you. If you could work those issues out with the school district and with uh, Council District 1, they are here. The school, school district is right behind. I've already talked to them. Okay. We'll get this back in 30 days. Thank you. So 8, 9, and 10, we can move them all, um, except 9, we are going to continue for 30 days and uh, with the comments incorporated by Council District 1. Okay? Next item. Um, I believe that's all we have, um, Council Member. Items 11, 12, and 13, you approve with that right. consent, yeah. So that concludes our meeting, unless anybody wants to chat about anything. Dr. Clyde Williams did sign up a public comment card, but he's gone, so. Okay, back there, there he is. <laughs> oh, there he is. You got a public comment card. Are you okay? I'm out. All right. <laughs> Thank you very much. Meeting adjourned. It was approved.